Hi and welcome to the Pesticide Vendor Certification Course. In this video we're going to discuss pesticide regulations. Um, this will cover chapters 7, 8, 9 and 10 in the uh, Pesticide Vendor Certification Course Manual. So let's talk about how pesticides are regulated in Canada. So when it comes to the Federal Act, it's under the uh, Pest Control Products Act or PCP Act. This act is under the auspices of Health Canada and the Pest Management Regulatory Agency. Uh, here they do a health evaluation of pesticides. They look at the environmental evaluation of the pesticides. They also look at the value and sustainability assessment of those pesticides. Each pesticide is reevaluated every 15 years or more often if a special review is necessary. Emergency use registrations. If there is a pest outbreak that occurs that causes significant economic, environmental, or health problems, and there is no product registered in Canada for control of that pest and no alternative control available method is available uh, then an emergency use registration may be issued. Uh, an example of that is organic field uh, producers received an emergency registration for uh, a product to control cucumber beetles back in 2014. There are also user requested minor use registrations. Uh, pesticides that are not already registered in Canada but registered in another country. And also there's a user requested minor use label expansion and that's for a pesticide that's already registered in Canada on a major crop. When it comes to enforcement of the Pesticide Act we have provincial officers in Ontario that do this task. They're allowed to inspect crops and places of business, farms. They can take samples. Uh, they can seize records, equipment, and pesticides. And they can ask for help from the OPP or local police to accomplish these things. Um, they can also secure things or places so they can seal off a building that no one can enter or a field. And they can issue tickets and or provincial orders. So let's look at the tickets that they can uh, issue. They can issue a provincial officer order, which is for contravenance of the act or regulations, an order or license or permit. Um, they can also issue a stop order. So in case of an emergency, they can issue, uh, tell people to stop whatever they're doing, whether it's an application or whatever is in contravenance of the act. They can also issue a control order that can limit or stop or change the use of a pesticide. The fines are substantial. Uh, for a person, it can range from $20,000 to $50,000 per day. And a corporation can range from $100,000 to $200,000 per day. When it comes to classifications of pesticides in Ontario, the Act changed in January 1st of uh, 2021. It's far more simplified now. We have four major classes of, of pesticides. First is manufacturing pesticides, which is Class A. These would be involving products that researchers may be using or manufacturers may be using to formulate a pesticide. The average grower or vendor will not be seeing these products. Uh, Class B products are restricted products uh, and Class C are commercial products. So you have to have a license or, or certification to purchase and use those products. Class D products are domestic and those are household products that anyone can use. So you could go into the local hardware store uh, or garden center and and buy some a domestic product uh, to use in your home. 
Domestic products will always be lower concentration of active ingredient and smaller volumes of uh, product as well. So this chart shows us uh, who can buy and who can use these products. So as I mentioned, the Class A products, they can be purchased by a general vendor or manufacturer, and they can be used by manufacturers or researchers. When it comes to Class B and C, uh, they can be purchased by general vendors, certified farmers, licensed exterminators, permit holders, or specified professionals, manufacturers, or researchers. Who can use them is that same list of people, plus supervised assistant farmers or technician and trainee when they're directly supervised for some uses. When it comes to the class D, which is this third group down, um, anyone can purchase them and anyone can use them. Um, also listed here is a class E, which is a IPM certified farmer. So that's for treated seed uh, with, that's been treated with neonics. Uh, there's very uh, little of that used in Ontario at all today that needs to be certified to use. So when it comes to selling pe uh, pesticides, the general vendor may sell any class of pesticide. Uh, in that retail location, they must employ at least one certified outlet representative, uh, in other words, a certified vendor at that business outlet. A limited vendor may only sell class D pesticides, and a treated seed vendor may only sell class E pesticides. So let's look at farmer certification. Who can we sell to as vendors? Uh, we can sell to uh, general vendors, licensed exterminators, farmers, whether they're certified or not, depending on the classification of the pesticide, weed inspectors, registered beekeepers and bee inspectors, researchers, homeowners, and permit holders. Uh, an example of the grower pesticide uh, safety course certification card is here in the lower right of the screen. Certified, certified farmers are responsible for all pesticide use and handling on their farm. And this is includes pesticides used on lawns and gardens, the use of biopesticides or class D pesticides. Uh, it also includes pesticides use and handling by farmer assistants. A farmer assistant may not purchase a class B or C pesticide, however they are able to use them under the direction of a certified farmer. And an assistant uh, pesticide card is pictured on the lower right of your screen. Farmers who are not certified may buy or use class D pesticides on their farm. They cannot, however, use class B or C's. When it comes to selling rodenticides, uh, we follow the same basic idea. So class B pesticides, uh, so commercial pesticides such as fast track place packs, uh, can a licensed exterminator or a certified farmer can buy uh, and use those products, but uh, they must have that grower certification or present their license exterminator license. Class C products are the same way exactly as the Class B. And Class D, which are domestic pesticides, so for example, Wilson Predator rat bait, um, they can be purchased by, by homeowners as well as certified farmers. And they don't have to have any training or license to, to buy those products. In some cases, uh, permits are required. So for example, a certified farmer or licensed exterminators may need a permit for some uh, pesticide applications. Uh, use for application to water or research, and you must see that letter from the Ministry of Environment, uh, Climate Change and Parks. Also, you may see persons authorized to buy and use uh, health professionals, veterinarians, bee inspectors, or registered beekeepers. And this could be for the use of health of trees, 
used to protect natural resources are used by manufacturers. Exemptions from the cosmetic pesticide ban. First of all, the cosmetic pesticide ban uh, does not allow pesticides to be used uh, just for looks, very simply. There are some exceptions. So for the promotion of public health or safety, so public works uh, department, the municipality may use it uh, for use in related to forestry and for structural exterminations. Exemptions with specific conditions for use could be golf courses, specialty turf, specified sports fields, research, uh, agriculture, management, and protection of natural resources. Class C cosmetic and non-cosmetic uses. Vendors must inform purchasers in writing that using the pesticide for any cosmetic use is illegal in Ontario. Handouts must be given to the customer and you'll see an example below and there is an example in the uh, vendor pesticide safety course manual. When it comes to records that must be kept uh, for class A, B, or C, these records must include the name and address of the person buying or receiving the pesticide, uh, the number and expiry date of that person's permit, if they have to have a permit, license type, certificate, or certificate of registration under the Bees Act. So that would include the grower pesticide safety course number and expiry date, and a description of the pesticide, which must include the PCP Act number, the Ontario classification, package size and quantity. The date of the sale or transfer is must be included as well. When it comes to uh, display of pesticide products, uh, again, depending on the classification of products, uh, when it comes to A, B and C uh, or D, uh, we have to have it so it wouldn't, the pesticide would not contaminate other products. This would include feed, uh, food, clothing, anything else. Uh, when it comes to A, B, and C, it must not be accessible directly to the customer. In other words, it must be kept away from the general public of being able to walk in and pick up a container. Class D, however, uh, you may go in and have access to it. So, if, for example, on a shelf at a hardware store. Also, um, when it comes to Class D, it cannot be accessible to children. So ideally it should be on shelves one meter above the floor. And you can see some pictures above of uh, some class, uh, some storage where it's locked away behind glass where the general public cannot get uh, to the class uh, A, B, or C products. So that covers storage, uh, regulations, and uh, use of pesticides. Thank you for listening.